Please welcome Susana Balan. So the young people that are in Manhattan, then in, in the 90s, I continue being like that, is the people that they know that they can be very powerful, but they have problems in to understand emotional relationships with couples. So they come to see me because they don't want it to work as what they have to do in order to earn money they wanted to, to come to see me in order to know how to find the real couple, the soulmate. A young woman uh, told me something that I felt that's a kind of accusation. Uh, she told me, she was a very, very extraordinary, uh, well success journalist. And she told me, uh, you women from your generation taught us how to fight, but you didn't teach us how to laugh. For me, it was something, uh, uh, what, what's that? And I was, I was risky, feeling guilty, I have to confess that. And I was very worried, not only because of her and my, com my commitment with my clients, but also with my two daughters that were in the same age. I could imagine that the conflict could happen because there are people that face life looking for power other people that face life looking for love. So you can organize the world in base of love of power, like you, you can organize the, your life in, for the power of love. Um, in one hand, the people uh, in the blue side wanted to reach the highest peak of ambition, and the people that in the red side wanted to enter and deep in the deepest root of belonging. So different, completely different conceptions of how you are going to be happy in life. The question of this girl was not only for this woman. It's only my daughters told me that, and many of the main clients that I have at that time also didn't understand and accused the mother sometimes to be too tough or too weak or too soft, or accuse the father to be too soft, or too strong, or too, too mean, or something like that. So I begin, began to think in what happened with me and my generation of a child. I was born in Argentina in the 40s, and um, in that time, I am not speaking about myself, I am speaking about my generation, she was right, uh, it's a generation stuff. We used to have the life organized in a kind of divided, words. The fathers belong to the power, the mothers belong to the love. The fathers was the one that looked for independence, the mother was looked for dependence. The father will look for the freedom, the women will look for security, the mothers. The uh, fathers, the men that were looking for rationality, logic, thought, thinking, and the women was uh, putting the accent in the feelings, in the intuitions, and in the communication, and, and uh, to be together. Um, so we, myself as a woman, and my brother as a man, like all, well, no, I cannot tell all, but many of uh, the women and the men of my generation, we were born and raised in a divided life, in a divided um, uh, words that, and receiving divided embrace. So the divided embrace was a strong embrace from the power love, and a good embrace from the uh, love power. We didn't want it to have a, a, a divided embrace because you can be strong if you are a powerful person, but also perceived as a mean if you are too strong, and you can be good, uh, but perceived as a weak from the other point of view. So many of men in my generation wanted to have the possibility to belong, to receive the richness of being loved for the children, to be at home, not to be in the everyday fight, not to be the warriors that they have to be in order to sustain families by themselves. And so they wanted something cozy, in the way, same way that we, women, look at the, mm, the word of our fathers, our fathers like a kind of mysterious, fantastic, 
attractive uh, words that you, you wanted, we wanted to be there, you wanted to belong to this, this place. So we don't want the divide and brace. So you don't want the divide and brace because we, not only both of them, my mother and my father, the men and women in this generation embrace each other because they need this complementary, but it was a divided embrace. They have the 100% of just half of the world. So we wanted the 100% of the 100% of the world. So we have been looking for the full embrace. The full embrace, I have to tell you, as many of you know, didn't work. And it didn't work because when we feeling mean, intended to be good, we, ha we behave weakly. We feeling weak, we intended to be strong, behave meanly. I come back again to, um, to the question of this uh, young journalist, and I thought that she was right. She was right, it was something that, no, I don't think that we sent her the message that have to fight and not have to love, but I, I am sure that we send our children contradiction mes messages about love and, and be strong and be good at the same time in a kind of emotional hybrid uh, identity. So I think that among many other stuff, baby boomers are the first generation of emotional hybrids. So what does it mean, emotional habit? Emotional habit, hybridity is an amazing concept. I think the hybridity is fantastic because hybridity means the creation, the new, uh, as you know, nothing happens just um, by chance in, 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 from something that is unique and rigid and it for, for the first time. I always, the process of transformation and hybridity is the creation for different kind of concepts. But the problem is hybridity in this complexity of words could be very confused and very ambiguous. It's a kind of epidemic of love mistrust. They love each other. They love complete, they love, they're passion of each other. It's much more passion than in other uh, 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 generations because for us, love is important, but much more important for work and much more important for the world and much more important was um, whatever, other kinds of stuff. Love is very important in this generation, but they, they can trust each other. And they, they, can, they cannot trust each other because they don't trust themselves. They don't know how to be good without being weak, and they don't know how to be strong without being mean, men and women. Love cannot live without trust. So, there is a possibility for um, a way out for the emotional hybrids, the second generation of emotional hybrids, our, our children? My answer is yes. Um, I think that there are some. It's not just one. The precise embrace is to look for, receive an embrace that can hug you in exactly the part of you that you are connected with the loneliness and the death that each human being face in their life. So the precise embrace needs to follow some kind of guidelines if you follow the guidelines of precision, resonance, and reciprocity. What is precision? Precision means listen carefully to oneself. The honesty in which you have to work, is, and I wanted to repeat the word Honesty is something very difficult, but this is very, very important in order to proceed with the second uh, uh, guidelines, that is resonance. When you know, <clears throat> as much as possible, because uh, no one is going to know uh, oneself completely, uh, and only you know yourself completely with the resonance to the other, because you think that you are telling something and the other doesn't perceive what you are telling. So it's very important to really listen to the other. If the other understand what you need and want it and have the possibility to give it to you, and you understand what the other needs and you have the possibility and the, want, the desire to give it to, to, the, to the, uh, this. This kind of interaction is very important because uh, also means to be a loved person, a good person, 
If you tell the other, I'm sorry, I understand you perfectly well. I am not ready to give it to you. So this is beautiful because this is another way to practice love. If you are lucky to find the reciprocity is when you find that the same person to whom you are ready to give it what this person needs, this person is ready to give what you need. And I am speaking about reciprocity here. I'm not speaking about equality. I think that one of the uh, wrong messages that my generation passed to our children was the story of to be equals. It's, this is not work. We are not equals. Men and women are not equals, and each of us have different possibilities and different skills. So we don't need each other to be equal. So like a kind of the concept, the concept of equality is not the conception of reciprocity. Means to be. Reciprocity for means to be. Give to the other what the other needs, really, and receive what I need from the other, which is not the same. The process embrace is based on autonomy. Neither independence nor dependence is autonomy. You are an autonomous person that takes the decision not to be free or not to look for security only. It's to be responsible. It to take the responsibility, it to be accountable for oneself or for the other, because you have to take care of yourself at the same time that you are going to take care of the other. And this is very important because sometimes when you feel uh, selfish because you uh, tell the other person, I need something, and if you don't tell the other person, I need that or I need the other or something like that, and the other can tell you I cannot give you, etc., etc., you're not taking the responsibility to take yourself and to allow the other person to take care of yourself. And this, has, this message has to transmit with clarity. Uh, and all the conferences today I have in hearing the accent put in, in the honesty and the responsibility and the transparency in each field, in, in personal fields, community fields, um, economical fields. And I think this clarity, this lucidity is neither just thinking, neither just feeling. The word of feeling is not going to be able to have any success if just feeling. And the mm, world of uh, think, thinking or rationality are not going to have the flesh that you need in order to celebrate life. You can be uh, good without feeling weak, and we can strong without feeling mean. Thank you very much.